Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us again today. Well, we have another pistol video for you here today. We're going to be taking a quick look at the Smith & Wesson M&P 9 Shield 2.0. Now, a lot of people may feel like with all of the new high-capacity micro-compacts on the market that guns like the Shield 9 here, 43X, etc., you know, may not really have as much room in the concealed carry market as they used to. But there are others that think that these guns, being a little bit bigger, have got better shootability. And sometimes that's what's more important. So does the MP9 Shield have an advantage? Well, we're going to find out in just a minute. All right, once again, welcome back. Thanks for being with us today. If this is your first time coming to the channel, or if you've watched our videos before and just haven't had a chance to do so before now and you like our content, please consider subscribing. You can locate that subscribe button right over there in the lower right-hand corner of your computer screen. Or if you're on a mobile device, you can scroll down below the video and hit subscribe button that way. It's a simple thing that helps out a whole lot, and we really appreciate it. So, Smith & Wesson MMP9 Shield. Now, obviously, this gun's been around for a while, and of course, you know, the 2.0, you know, has a, a few improvements over the original gun. And without getting into the history and the other one, we're going to focus strictly on this gun today. Now, we've looked at the larger version, the 5-inch version of the 2.0, and we've looked at the larger version of the metal, and we've even looked at the Shield Plus. But this gun seems to be a pretty important, um, you know, member. It has its place in the concealed carry market and I think that uh, it's about time that we covered it. So before we get into anything, always we like to start off with a good uh, size comparison and to me, I've got a lot of guns that are close in size to this, but the one that struck me as being the closest is going to be the Glock 43X. Now it looks just looking at them, obviously you can see they're very very similar just right off the bat as far as the overall length, the grip um, trigger guard areas are very similar as we turn them over and you can look at the length you can see that they are very very similar as far as length you can see that the width is really really close now they're not the exact same but the reason I do these comparisons if you've never heard the reasoning before is you know it's all about comfort carrying the firearm and if you're a person who's carried the 43x for example and you've wondered about the shield well you can see that it's extremely close to the same size in pretty much every way that you can imagine. Another thing I was going to show you is uh, a lot of the micro compacts we've talked about come in quite a bit smaller. For a good example, I've got a Hellcat here. And if you look at the Hellcat, you'll notice that it's noticeably smaller in the length, but much more so in the grip. Now, obviously, it's going to be easier to conceal a gun like this because you have less gun to conceal. But that also means that you have less gun to hang on to, and the gun's going to behave a little bit differently than the slightly larger one. And we'll cover more of that whenever we get to the range. But that gives you a pretty good idea of what the size is going to be like in the holster when you carry the MNP 9 shield. And that's good to know because that's the whole starting point. All right, we're going to get right into the features here, but before we do, we want to take a moment to thank our friends over at Don's Weaponry for providing us this beautiful example of the Smith & Wesson MMP9 Shield 2.0 for our tabletop review today. Don's Weaponry is a huge supporter of firearm safety and education, and we can't thank them enough. So, we always like to start off with a quick safety check, so we are going to remove our magazine here and then let you see that... We are clear, nothing in the chamber, and we are all good to go here. So, first things first, um, obviously this is a polymer-framed, striker-fired, 9mm semi-automatic pistol. As far as capacity, it comes with two magazines. You have a flat-fitting magazine here that is seven rounds. Okay. And then you have a extended magazine here that holds eight rounds with a little extra plate on it. Now, this is one of those that I really think that for most people, um, you're going to want to leave the larger magazine in. It's not even about the extra round. 
Um, I've got, you know, pretty good size hands, not the biggest, but when I grab this with the smaller um, magazine in it, you can see I can get two fingers on it and then the pinky's kind of here. And it's not horrible, you know, it's not like you don't feel like you have a good feel of the gun. But any time that I have a grip that's only going to give me two fingers worth, I like to have the indentions, you know, I like to have the finger indentions in the gun itself. Um, so, in absence of that, I really like to have enough real estate here to get all three fingers. And with the other magazine, you do that. So, for me, I'm a big fan of that. And, of course, you pick up an extra round in the process. So, look at the top here. You have standard uh, three-dot white uh, dot here. And it's, uh, you know, it's not bad. I mean, you can pick this up just fine under most conditions. Um, I personally prefer something that's high visibility on the front, like that Ameriglow, that little orange there. I just like that um, for me. It's a lot easier for me to pick that up and concentrate on uh, getting on target. Same thing with a Hellcat. The Hellcat has a little high visibility sight there. And, of course, you know, you can put those kinds of sights on this. There's all kinds of aftermarket support for these, so you can certainly get that, no problem. Um, but so it's basic sight setup. You got some little tiny serrations here on the front. You can see that, and you've got some larger ones on the rear. I don't really care about the ones on the front because I don't do press checks generally. If I'm grabbing my gun, I'm usually going to do it from you know back here. But they're there, you know, if that kind of thing um, appeals to you. So you have your slide lock and release here, and if you're going to do the takedown procedure on this gun, it's actually very easy with in locked position here. You rotate your takedown lever here down. And once it's down, all you have to do is release your slide there. And then push the whole thing forward. And you can see your rod and your spring tips right out. And of course your barrel tips out. Then you can clean all that stuff, put it back together. And then simply reverse the process, slide it back, lock it. And then rotate your lever back up. It's a very easy takedown procedure. Um, nothing to it at all um, this also has a manual safety now i'm not a fan of manual safeties on my guns however um, the way they've done it on the shield here it's not in the way so you know if i don't want to use it i don't have to worry about it i just keep it disengaged but a lot of people like having that manual safety to me as long as it doesn't get in my way like i hate it when it's on the side and i can't help but run my hand across it they've done a good job of making it you know really subdued so people who want it can use it and people like me that don't can just ignore it so no problem it's got a pretty good sized trigger guard i like that i've got you know long fingers so i like being able to index the trigger guard and then be able to get into it very easily without having to come you know hunt and peck for that hole the trigger i like on the shield there's a lot of guns kind of in these categories that I don't think have very good triggers. You see all kinds of people changing the triggers out on their Glocks and even the Hellcats and things like that. Um, this is a gun I don't really felt like it was necessary to do that. The trigger is pretty good on this gun and I've, I've enjoyed it quite a bit. Okay, so your magazine release is right here. Um, this is a pretty well designed location. The way I usually judge this is when I have a, a good grip on the gun, if I have a two-handed grip, um, if I can't tell where the magazine release is, then I think they've done a good job, and that's what they've done here. I don't feel like I can pop a magazine accidentally. So it's in a good place, and it's easy to access when you're ready, and it just comes right out. Uh, the texturing, they've done a really good job. Um, it's not too harsh, but it's definitely harsh enough to where you're not going to drop this gun, and I like the way they've gone all the way around with it, and they've gone all the way around the magazine. So when you have your hand on it, Every part of your hand that's touching this um, feels like it's got a good grip on the firearm. So that is your uh, basic overview of the features on the MMP9 Shield 2.0. So this is a gun that I can talk about the range a lot because I've got a lot of experience shooting this. I've owned one of these for a long time. The MMP9 Shield, uh, it's just a really good shooting gun. You know, I mentioned in the beginning that some of the differences, reason why some of these pistols like this are still relevant is because even though you got some of these higher capacity guns like the Hellcat, and don't get me wrong, I love my Hellcat and I love my P90 
P365 SIGs. Those are great guns. But when I'm shooting these guns, they have a totally different feel. Um, you know, there's a lot more recoil in these smaller guns than going up just a little bit more. Just having the little bit slightly bigger gun, it handles that recoil a little bit better. And sometimes that's what you're after is just how well you can shoot the gun. Um, not picky about ammo whatsoever. Um, I'm usually pretty consistent with my basic range ammo. No issues there. The only thing that I experience different with the shield versus uh, some of the other 9mm pistols that I shoot. Um, of course I shot some gold dot through it. I always do that. And of course I shot the Sig V crown. But normally I shoot the 115 grain better. But in the shield I end up shooting better with the 124. Now it's been a while since I've done the defensive ammo test and you know maybe I'm back to 115 again but in this case I remember it was the 124 I did a better job. The trigger on this gun you know I see a lot of people buy pistols and they upgrade their triggers right away and I'm not really big on doing that. I figure if I'm going to pay the kind of money it takes to you know, buy a firearm like this, if the trigger's not good enough out of the box, then I'm probably not going to buy the gun. So, when you grab this, you've got a decent area where you can feel this. It's not too spongy, there's not too much resistance, but you know the minute you've gotten into the actual, you know, wall here. And then you come in just a bit, and it, the break is almost immediate. And I like that because I don't like triggers that have a lot of travel before you get to the wall. And so you can hear your reset and then clean break. You can see your reset once again. And then clean break. It's a very easy trigger to get used to. And with this firearm, the first time I ever got it out of the box, you know, I was shooting sub three inch groups at 21 feet. And of course those got better and better with the time I spent with it. So I think pretty much anyone spends a little bit of time with the MP9 shield they can shoot well with it. This is actually a gun that I see appear at the range a lot whenever I'm shooting. A lot of new people still buy these, new shooters. Um, because what ends up happening, you know, you can recommend all kinds of guns based on size and, and features, but at the end of the day, when if you really want to help somebody out, you need to have them go to the range and find out what they can shoot. And a lot of people who go to the range find out that something like this, the MNP9, is a really good option that they can shoot well. And if you can shoot well with it, then you can carry in confidence. And if confidence is probably one of the biggest things you need to have if you're going to carry it concealed to know that if you are in the unfortunate situation where you need your firearm, you're confident that you can use it. So what's it like to carry the MMP9 shield? Well, in a word, easy. I showed you earlier that it's kind of a, almost a match for the 43X. And this is a gun that I have carried a lot. And, um, you know, oddly enough, like I said, I've shot the MMP quite a bit, but I've never really carried it at great length, mainly because there's some other guns that are just real favorites of mine. Um, you may have heard me mention, you know, I do a lot of five-shot revolvers and HKs and things of that nature. And so I just never really spent any time carrying the gun. So to me, I wanted to keep it simple. And so for the purposes of my test, I went with a sticky. And a lot of people um, feel like that they need to have something that absolutely has some hard retention to it. And don't worry, I tested this with some other kind of holsters as well. But initially, I just wanted to see how this felt in the waistband as far as weight. And like my Glock 43X, it's extremely comfortable. It, you know, it's so light. Um, you know, with, with the larger magazine, with the 8-round capacity plus 1, um, it really doesn't weigh that much. Uh, one of my favorite guns that I uh, carried a lot uh, before was my SIG 239 you know, which has a 8 plus 1 capacity as well, but it's a metal gun and it's very heavy. And I like that round count. 8 plus 1 is a, you know, it's a number I'm very comfortable with. I feel like that, you know, obviously as a guy that will carry a 5-shot revolver, I, I don't have to have 15-round magazines in order to feel comfortable. But extremely easy to carry in the sticky. And I also um, carried this in a crossbreed. I have a crossbreed uh, super tuck for this that's Kydex and horsehide. 
and you guys have seen those, you know, it has two clips. Those are pretty good holsters too for this kind of thing. Uh, but this is light. Um, and if I was using the other magazine, I would actually carry this in my pocket because this is actually small enough in a sticky that can go right in my pocket and I would be perfectly comfortable with that too. So it's a gun that's pretty light and there's, you know, literally hundreds of holster options for this guy right here because it's been out for a while and uh, Smith & Wesson has huge aftermarket support. But uh, extremely easy to carry. I actually know several people that, uh, females that carry these in their purse. Um, you know, they like the fact it's got a manual safety, so they engage the safety. They have a, you know, like a locking holster that or a leather thumb brake holster, and they keep it inside their purse. So it's popular with a lot of different people. Um, a lot of people can shoot it well, but it is very easy to carry. So overall impressions of the m and 9 Shield 2.0. Well, this gun's been around for a while, and we already know there's lots of competition in smaller guns, but I think that if you're a person that is looking for a handgun that serves a couple of different roles, I think that this is a great choice. Um, it's a good size handgun, not just to be a concealed handgun, but it's a good just all-around home defense, you know, good gun to carry under any circumstances if you you know are on your property or something and you have a place where you can open carry this is a perfect gun for that um, it fills a number of needs that i think uh, not a lot of guns can because of the grip the fact that it has the feel of more of a larger gun you can shoot this gun very accurately and it, there's not a big learning curve on getting to be able to do that um, I don't know too many people that can't pick this firearm up and become, you know, pretty proficient with it pretty quickly. It's very forgiving. It has a good trigger. And like I say, it, it, it's very comfortable. The ergonomics are good on the gun. Um, and in many ways, I think the, I like the ergonomics on it a little bit better than my Glocks. Don't get me wrong, you know, I love my Glocks. But, you know, they are kind of, you know, squared off. They are kind of bricky, especially in the handle. And some people like that. But I like the fact that the grip on the M&P is a little more designed around my hand. So as far as comfort, um, I think I'd have to give the nod to the shield anyway. But, um, you know, in a market, you've got a lot of guns like this that are a little under, a little over $500, depending on how you have them equipped. And um, I think if you're looking for something to fill both a concealed carry need and an overall, uh, you know, home protection whatever type of roll that you need, I think the shield is still a great choice. It doesn't have quite the capacity as some of these other guns, but with eight plus one, you're talking about nine rounds of nine millimeter ammunition. And as you've heard me say before, as far as, you know, what we have recorded historical data, um, you know, shootout data, the rules of three applies um, still today, you know, most of these uh, gunfights are going to involve three shots or less. It's going to happen in three seconds or less inside of three meters. So with nine rounds, the, uh, the statistics are in your favor as far as it being enough ammo. Um, so it doesn't bother me. And um, I think it's a good balance. I think it's a really good uh, combination of shootability and capacity. And uh, it has high marks for comfort. So Yes, there's a lot of new smaller options, but that doesn't mean they're better. I think this is still a great handgun for anybody. All right. Well, that's going to do it for today. As always, we appreciate you being with us. We'll be back very soon with another video for you. So until that time, everybody be safe and have a great day. Thank you.